Live, live, live! Yes, in fact, we are live to talk about a hot topic amongst the Rovers faithful. Is it... It's a hot topic around the Rovers faithful. Is it time for John Dar Thomason to go? That's right. That's the question I'm throwing out there, not just to you, but to, of course, the Rovers mafioso who are going to be joining me here for this live podcast uh, to talk about everything Rovers related. And that's, uh, let's bring on a, a few of them in. A couple of, we're going to get some other ones joining in us a little bit later on. But let's welcome, first and foremost, Young Jacob, if I can do it. How do I do it? In fact, there's a couple of years right there. A double whammy. Alexander Haben and Jacob, how are you doing? How is your new year? How's your Christmas? Go on, Alex. I'll let you go first. <laughs> I, I had a happy new year and a happy Christmas. And the only thing that I wish could have been a part of it was a Blackburn Rovers victory. Yeah, we, uh, we we're on a bit of a bit of a downer at the moment. Uh, four defeats in a row, followed on by, of course, a brand new year, twenty twenty four. Chance to start all over again, perhaps, and then we could only muster a draw. Jacob, how are you? What are your thoughts heading into twenty twenty four? Yeah, I, I was hoping we could uh, we could start twenty twenty four the way we started twenty twenty three with a win. Uh, we got that one 0 win over Cardiff last year, didn't we? Um, Bradley Dax scoring, but yeah, it wasn't meant to be, I suppose. Uh, Alex, you were, you were a brave man venturing all the way up from down south to watch Rovers at the minute, but yeah, um, wasn't wasn't the best of ways to start 2024. Um, the home form has been absolutely horrendous this season, which you know is quite uncommon for Rovers, really. So it's, you know, it's somewhat of a fortress, isn't it? Fortress Ewood and all that. We we had that last season. Um, it's the away form that's kind of been carrying us, uh, not so much recently, but prior to this really bad run, um, we, we, we really need to sort this home form out. If we can't beat bottom of the league at home, um, then, yeah, it's it's a bit worrying, isn't it? Just thank God we got a point, I suppose. Yeah, and, and of course we uh, there was some uh, uh, alarming stat for me is that we've um, we've lost just as many games as Rotherham have, and they are rock bottom of the table at the moment. That's both home and away. So let's get let's 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 bring you all in here, try and uh, make a big old party of it. Uh, we have got got Millie joining us as well. She's uh, playing incognito, keeping it on the down low. But uh, Millie, what are your thoughts of Rovers at the moment? The state of play, of course, you. You know, can we say an ex-employee now of Rovers or, or what? what what's your official status? Yeah, yeah ex-employee. Okay, okay. And non, so what? No, no controversial. No leaving present. Apparently. No, I didn't. What on earth? <laughs> I didn't. Well, I, at least I gave you a little special something for uh, for yeah, your, you. Yeah, you did. I've not tried any yet. If they're still in date, I'll have a double at them. Of course, they're in date. Of course, they're in the <laughs> cheeky little. Not, not even a Venkis burger. No, no thank you, no. Burger. Anyway, I won't Melly, eat what, that anyway. Melly, what is your take on the scenarios that, at, at Ewood at the moment? Uh, of course, JDT. Uh, is he is he under pressure? Do you think, is there any point in us having this conversation? Uh, I don't know, because if you look at the past couple of games, obviously, <laughs> that I know of, they've been all right. Rovers have been winning them. Um, I can't say the same for own games. Because uh, I've, I've I've not managed to watch the own games, um, but the own the own games that I've that I've heard the fans go, it seems that we've managed to bag a few goals. But then, in injury time or like last ten minutes of the game, that's when the oppositions put their goals in back at net. So I mean, obviously, for it to for it to happen every like near enough every single match, there's got to be some sort of failure there within the formation do you not think yeah yeah I, I i do think and there is that man in in the spotlight at the moment it is jdt uh who of course the buck stops there really it does stop with him he is he is the focal point he makes the majority of the decisions for the current crop of players um but that could be that could be another uh, uh, a major well it is a major in my eyes a major uh, reason for our current situation it is that we are threadbare 
But uh, the, the question I pose is, is it time to go? Is it time for him to go, to leave? Has he been let down? Is it time for him to go, to be pushed out the door uh, or, or what? So let's, let's bring in Alexander Haven. What is your take? Uh, if, if, if we're going to be bl- brutally honest, you know, what's your opinion? You made that long trip from down yeah. south to watch your road, first Rovers game in a while. Uh, 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 disappointed, uh, pleased, you know. I think most... Yeah. My, my opinion is most billionaires do some kind of deal with the government where the government's sort of like, oh, did that happen? And oh, suddenly the money's there and oh, um, they can do everything they want. So I don't know why Venki's hands are so tied with this financial situation with the Indian government. I don't I don't see why they can't, you know, <laughs> you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours kind of thing, you know. Um, and free up the funds and support JDT. Um, just they need to do whatever it takes to give him what he needs. And in my opinion, that is experienced championship level players, at least good players for this division, which other teams seem to have like Preston. Those kind of players that grind you out those results and get you those one nils and make sure you don't concede goals like we're conceding. And he needs that kind of backing. You know, he's got the attacking side of things. Like, I'd I'd compare it to Arsenal. Like, they had the foundation. They had the solid defence. They had that foundation. And then Wenger brought in all these brilliant attacking players. JDT's got the attacking players, I would would say. Some of them need to learn how to score some goals. (laughs) Um, and improve, but I think they can improve. They're young, a lot of them, and they'll, they'll improve. I'm sure they will. But he needs that defensive, solid foundation um, that we haven't really got. And I think that comes with experience. Um, we need those experienced pros, I yeah. think. Uh, well, I, I I I agree with you to a point. I, I think we have we have players. They have players that f- that that can play football and they play in certain positions, but they do lack experience. And I, and I think eventually, eventually, some of these some of these young guns will prove to be uh, quality players at at, at our level. Um, but you know, when we you know, I I feel a lot of heat at the moment for young Mackenday. I, I like the guy. I don't know, you know. I don't know I where he's. Him. Say again. Yeah. I I feel for him as well. I feel for him as well. I think he, I think it could all click for him, but it's just going to take time. It's just natural. Um, I, it I is. And it he, he, he's not. He's not the only one. You know. I. You know. I. Over the past, I'm going to just chuck out my my opinions. Here. I, I also made the trip. The trips over past three three or so games. Very disappointed with with Niall Ennis. I don't think he is anywhere near uh, a player for for us for what we're, where we were going. Uh, Moran had a good start to his loan, not really kind of delivered since. Um, you know, I, I, Talalovic. Yeah, people are now seem to be kind of jumping on the back, like saying he's you know he he's, he has shown some significant signs of of of, of improvement, but still. Not, not there yet. You know, I, I feel Leonard is probably the best out of the three between Ennis Talovic and and uh, and Leonard. I think at the moment, I, I would rather go with Leonard than the rest. However, Talovic is a bigger player, stronger player, and I think you know, mu- muscular wise, he he offers something different. But it's all poor. It's all very poor in that in that regard. Without Smodic, you know, we worry. I worry where the goals definitely come from. Um, but Jacob, what are your thoughts on, on the Mac and Day Heat? He's got a lot of heat right now with a lot of the guys on social media. Uh, is it warranted? Is it is he is he is he that bad? Um, <laughs> it's a tough question. That I mean, um, he you know he, he struggled for minutes at, at the start of the season. He he got a couple opportunities, uh, hit the ground running really, got himself a couple goals, and then just seemed to be frozen out of the squad for quite a period of time. Obviously, Hedges and Dolan were getting in the team in front of him, Moran. Um, and, you know, he, even even recently, it's, it's only been the past few games he's started to kind of get those sub-appearances. But, you know, before that, he was coming on at the 85th minute in, I can't remember, one of the games. But we're 
you know, we we were behind and he only comes on in the 85th minute and you're getting players uh, put on like Callum Britton being played on the wing in front of him. It must be a, a slap in the face for <clears throat> for Mark Onde when obviously a full back is playing in his position and uh, you know obviously that can't do his confidence any good. Obviously he had that loan spell at Aberdeen last season, didn't pull up any trees there. Um and it just seems John Dahl doesn't particularly trust him. I think after the Preston home game, I think he was somewhat at fault for their for their winner, really. Um, didn't really kind of track back, didn't really apply enough pressure to the person who crossed the ball in, which led to the header, what won them the game. Um, and I think that was the game that JDT kind of throws him out of the squad for quite a bit. And he's only just started to manage to get his way back in. But that isn't for a lack of trying. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we are so Fred Bear right now. He, he kind of has no choice, I suppose. Uh, at this point, I think I would rather see um, Jill Snan or I, I, I don't know how you pronounce the name, the Australian lads. Um, I thought he was really positive in some of those League Cup games. Got himself a goal or two, and uh, looks it looks an exciting play. We're on the books at Barcelona and Liverpool, I think, in their youth academies. I just, um, yeah, for for Mark Andre, for me, I think it, it probably should be a case of selling him uh, either this window to free up some cash, or if not, then the summer. Just cut our losses. We paid quite a substantial fee, really, for us seven hundred and fifty k, weren't it? Which Seems to have uh, been somewhat of a waste, and obviously that was more one of Morbury's last signings, weren't it? So he's not JDT's player, and um, yeah, just question whether he's a bit too small. He's not particularly fast either for someone of his height, really, which uh, isn't ideal. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing Jolson and get some more minutes. It, it's a but, steep. It's, it's, sorry, I was just going to say it's a steep learning curve. But that's the thing, we haven't got time. <laughs> we haven't got necessarily got time to give all these players so much time, you know. It depends no. what we want from this season, but yeah. Well, at well, this point, this season is a write off, really, isn't it? We're not gonna go down. I would you know, I would be gobsmacked if we were to go down. Um, you know, you look at Rotherham, Sheffield Wednesday, and you know, there's there's other teams who are who are worse than us. I know we went to Hillsborough and lost, but there are teams in this league who are worse. It w- we would have to have an absolutely torrid second half of the season and not sign anyone in January to kind of bolster the squad for us to go down. This season is just a, a transition season, really. And obviously, we just have to hope in the summer, you know, we they, they actually do back JDT. Because if they don't, he, he will walk. He's only got 12 months left, hasn't he? And I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame him, to be honest, after the whole... O'Brien fiasco last January, which if we'd have got him in, would have definitely seen us get playoffs, in my opinion. We missed out on goal difference. You get O'Brien in, he makes that one point difference, in my opinion. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we can feel our done by in this summer as well with the budget cuts. It's it's been really hard for JDT. He's working with such a young squad and expected to basically develop players and sell him. He's losing his best players. It looks like Carter's going to be on his way out and we're replacing him with a 20-year-old, not someone who has any experience, which we desperately need right now. Yeah, you, you are, you are everybody, everyone, yourselves and the, the comments all chipping into the agenda here a little bit about transfer rumours. We'll get to that in a minute. So if, you, if, you, if you're curious about that, we'll talk about that shortly. Diaz as well, the pending return. Jacob, hot topic with you. Of course, you did a little uh, uh, exclusive content on that bad boy. Um, but uh, what I was going to say, as, as mentioned earlier, is that this weekend is a prime time example for the likes of Gilsian and, and, and those folks who, you know, need to, to showcase JDT what, what, what they're all about. It could be a last chance salute for Mark and Day as well. Turn the clock back 12 months ago when I was getting rid of Joe, Joe Rankin Costello. I thought he was turd. And then, of course, he got given a chance in a cup. And then, and then now he's everybody's best man at their wedding. You know what I mean? He's like stepped up to the plate and and shown him what was what. So hopefully, these guys, the Mackendays, the whoever's, the Gil, the even the Niall Ennis, who rather than I, I think is is worthless. 
Uh, they've got to take these chances. Again, the League Cup did prove earlier in the season for Ennis. I think he got a goal or maybe even two goals. I don't know because uh, we scored a bunch. Uh, you know, good chance for for everybody to... I know it's Cambridge and, and we should beat Cambridge. And if we don't, I'll be embarrassed. But there should be enough talent, whether it is the young, young, young guns uh, coming in uh, to, to, to beat them. And then, and then as regards to transfers... You know, that seems to be the only way to to, to strengthen. And, and if I'm going to be brutally honest with you, if we do have to sell Hayden Carter, who I, who I think is a, is a great player for us in this time, uh, as long as we can, you know, I know there's that crew lad, <laughs> potentially. And that there's also maybe, there's, but maybe some rumours about Charlie Cresswell, which I, I think is a good player as well. I know he's from Preston, originally, like he's born from Preston. But he's, if, he, if we can get him on a permanent... I'll be all about that. I think he's a solid championship uh, uh, centre-back, young as well. It's, it's selling one to get another one. But if it means we sell one to get two and maybe a little bit of loose change, then I might be, I might be up for that. Millie, what are your thoughts on, on, uh, on uh, the, the future of some of these players, the Adam Whartons? Would you sell right? Would you cash now? Or would you try and figure something else out? Well, um. <laughs> I think with Adam Morton, it could do with staying like a bit longer. I don't know how long his contract actually is, um, how much he's got left on it, like. Um, but I think he could do with a bit longer, um, just because he's he's young in himself. I mean, he's like what twenty two or something. I don't know, um, but he's young anyway. Um, so if say like with. Um, I, I had this conversation the other day. Rovers seem to be one like a profiting club where we get them in either from the academy or we get them in really cheap and then we end up like training them up, being good enough at championship and then they end up going elsewhere, either in the championship, in, in League One or sometimes in, in, in the Premier League. Obviously not for the first team straight away. But, um, so I think it could do with staying a bit longer, but by the looks of it, Venkis don't want to put any more money in again. Um, so, I mean, I think they're going to have to revise who stays and who goes this, this season Re really hard. Yeah, well, let me let me pose this uh, also to to Alex here. You know, of course, Carter is, is the name that seems to be floating around for January. Uh, and I know Adam Wharton, Melly, spoiler, he just signed a new extension not too long ago. So he is going to be here, I think, to 20 or something like that, for, for a few years anyway. Years. So, yeah, he's, he's not he's not he's not a, a, an asset that we can will we'll, we'll lose cheaply soon. Um, but Alex and also Jacob. You know, would you sell? Would you sell an Adam Wharton in the summer? You know, some people say keep a hold of him, perhaps. But, you know, uh, but or, or retaining him could be doing us a detriment because there could be some value in that, that we could. And again, that's a, that's a crazy, scary word, could, because we don't know if we sell him for 5, 10, 50 million, are we uh, likely to see any of that money be reinvested so it could, it's, it's a bit of a gamble it's one of them uh, risky bit of business where you know you yeah, sell them oh, i hope with we'll get some money back but this is the venkies we're talking about <clears throat> alex I, I think we'd have to get a ridiculous crazy offer um to, to for in order for venkies to put money into buying more players i, I just well significant money or put it that way significant like serious, like what what it would take to to mount a promotion push, we would need a big offer for Adam for a play like Adam, Adam Morton's the one that we're probably going to get the most money for, um, but we'd have to get a really really crazy offer I think for for it to be, you know, our dream our dream scenario where there's enough to bring in to revamp the squad and bring it to promotion capability level uh so yeah i think uh, i think unless there's some kind of guarantee from venkies that they're going to put money into transfers like a reasonable percentage which i don't think we'll ever get but i i can i can see it not being enough investment in the team unless they get a crazy offer 
Jacob, what's your take? I think um, I think it's somewhat similar to, I suppose, to Alex Scott being sold at Bristol. Um, I'm not really sure what the value was there. Was it about 20 million or so? Yeah. Something yeah, along think, those lines. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd, I'd want at least 20 million at a minimum for someone like Adam Wharton. I think he's got a very good chance of playing for England one day. And I, I don't think that's bigging him up too much. I think, obviously, you know, he's playing it for England at youth level um, and, you know, he's playing week in, week out at the championship and just his quality for finding a pass and the vision, you, you just can't teach that. You, you just have it or you don't. And, uh, you know, it's the other attributes of his game where he's going to improve in terms of, you know, his goal scoring ability and maybe his defensive duties. Um I think it would have to be, you know, a 20 million sum. It just, unfortunately, with ourselves, is um, FFP. Uh, you know, even if we were to sell Adam Wharton for 20 million, because the club is, you know, obviously running at a last year on year, I think it's, you know, over 200 million pounds in debt. Uh, the Venkies are now with Rovers. Um, and obviously, you know, the gates we get on, it's, I think, I think it's only. Uh, it's only Rotherham who get lower gates on than we do in the championship. Um, yeah, we, we just don't want to find ourselves in a situation again, like in 2015, where we're under a transfer embargo. Um, <laughs> so we have to be so careful. And I think that's why, obviously, you see in the summer, after the you know fiascos with Joel Offwell, Dara Lenahan, Ryan Nyambe, Brereton Diaz, all going on freeze. And, you know, we only spend £1 million in summer. What's pathetic for a championship club who was just off the playoffs by goal difference. £1 million was a farce. But for, obviously, the budget cuts that come as well um, with, obviously, the Indian government and whatnot, you, you, we're, we're just scratching our heads wondering, even if we were to sell Adam Wharton for £20 million, what does that free up? Three, four million? It's not really worth it, is it? But I think Adam Wharton, obviously, he's signed that five-year deal. I think he's with us till 27, 2027, I think he is. I think it was a one-year extension on top of his contract. Um, he's not going to go off and he's not going to go unless he gets Rovers a, a big transfer fee. He's a Rovers fan. He's a he's a he's a he's a Blackburn lad. Um, he's going to make sure we're well looked after, I suppose, when he moves on. Well, that's what I hope, and that's what I well, that's what I hope for for a lot of like the the Ashley Phillipses of the world, and uh, and I and and I was I, I I'm a bit naive, like like Steve in the chat, and naive Steve's in the chat. I'm a bit naive, a little bit, and I always take uh, the, I have that hope in my mind that you know Adam Wharton, and and yeah, he is he is Rovers through and through, big fan by heart, and I don't think he will screw us over like an Ashley Phillips. But a Tyree stolen, you know, we gave him a second break after being released. I think that should should go a distance to him to thinking, OK, let's not screw Rovers over a bit more. They've just been shat on with Diaz. They've been shat on with Dak and all these other, you know, stars. So I'm, I'm hoping that somewhere some and Phillips did sign a contract a little bit, but it didn't really do much. So I I'm hope really we're right. And I hope I hope those guys. Uh, the, the 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 loyal ones, and I hope they they hope some some ounce of you know uh, uh, you know I don't know what the right word is, but I hope they appreciate Rovers for what they what they've given them their their entry into football and 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 don't screw us over. But let's focus yeah, mainly on the man in the picture right here, right now, Danish sensation JDT, come with a fanfare and and had a good season. What like we said, goal difference missed out last season, but. Look at this. Look at this form right here right now, guys. It's stonking. It is absolutely horrific. The only highlight in there was the Bristol City match. The rest, you would usually find it in the toilet. It's turd. <laughs> it is grade A turd. Um, which one out of those, Millie, if you can see the screen, hopefully you can see the screen, which one of them is the worst? Which one of those score lines hits you the <laughs> hardest? Ooh. Um, well, I'd either say Huddersfield or Rotherham. Yeah, yeah, the Huddersfield one, I can attest. 
It was bad. <laughs> I, I, I left early. I left out. I was there and I thought, fuck this. I ain't sticking around for get traffic. I'm done. I'm done. We're, we're going to have another op- opinion in just a second. Big DG in the house. We'll get to Denver in a second. Alex, what's your take on that? What's your stinker out of those last eight games? Oh, well, Southampton was painful, but it was it was kind of like it was expected. Um, the red the red card made it more painful, um, but yeah, it was expected. Probably, I'll probably go with Millie's choice as well of Huddersfield. Um, you know, it's after that four nil. You you want to see something in of, of some kind of a response. Um, they, the they, all, they all have something stinky about them. You know, the 4 nil drubbing, the, the, the collapse against Watford, the no-show against Huddersfield, the bit of fight back against Hull, but then just to shit the bed there. Hull, yeah. the, Blackburn, the Rotherham game where we're clearly the better, well, I wouldn't say clearly the better side, but, you know, Rotherham were a little hard, hard done by in the end. They could have, they, that, if that Tom Eves guy... You know, he had a couple chances. I think Rathbone hit the bar. It, it, it could have could have even ended more turdier but, than ooh. just the point. So each and yeah. Sheffield Wednesday, come on, man! They they these you if you scratch out Blackburn Rovers and put Millwall or or who well, else Stoke City or someone in there, a manager goes gets the sack, walks, quits, whatever. That form, it, I'm not. I, I love JDT the best. Is sackable form really? Isn't it? But let's bring in Denver. Hello, Denver. Thanks for joining us this late, 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 late Wednesday night. Uh, what is your take? If you can hear me, and and you know, you went to a couple of these games. I think. What what's what's your what's your what's your gut feeling at the moment with JDT? Is he the right man? Is he going to get snatched? Will he will he walk? Will he quit? What or, or will he just keep getting the payday? Look, I don't think he's going to walk, that's for one. I've been listening, I was racing back home from training, and uh, so I made sure uh, I made sure I listened, listened in to any what the, the conversation's been going on. But um, I think I went to a lot of, oh, and as we found, I missed quite a lot of the games, even though I'm season ticket holder, I missed them because I work and, and other commitments and I play still. So, but yeah, now I, um, I think uh, JDT, I still think is the right man for the job. Ultimately, I think, we're playing relatively good stuff. So in in the essence, I know we've had some really bad losses and, and I think it's time to change it up maybe a little bit, just for a little bit of time because morale's low. But I think if you look at it, other than that Huddersfield game where I was I was there and that was that was not a great game, but it looked like it looked like everyone had a hangover from Christmas Day, um, and it just just looked lethargic and it looked poor. And then he made the, the changes in the second half and looked a little bit better, but we let Huddersfield back into that game. But um I, I think JDT is still is still the right man. We're, we're playing reasonably well in in the tight areas, and the, the football is is very very good. I remember what, it's Rotherham the other day. I was thinking, look, we've got to take it with a pinch of salt. It is Rotherham, but they executed their game plan excellently in in the sense that um, you know, their their goal they were going to sit in deep. They were playing eleven men back. And they were going to get us on a counter, put a ball in, because they knew that Walstead is not going to be able to catch any of these balls. That that was our downfall in the end. Um, so it's it's now trying to identify, look, what we can do well. We can transition. We play with the ball really well out from the back. You know, we transition through midfield, look into, into the final third. But we can't score. That is a major issue. I, as I heard you talking about Talalovic and, and Ennis, and I do agree with you uh, with, with Ennis. I think he's really poor, but... Look, it's time, isn't it? Time, time will, will tell. With Talalovic, I think, I think he's good enough now. I just think it's to com- confidence. Like when I when he had that chance against, I think it was Rotherham, where he, he had he had all the world a confident player. A Sammy Smodic was hit that first time, but then you know you can just see the confidence isn't there from at the minute. So he's taken a take, taking the touch, and he's taken a really weak effort in the end. And it's just, I think, I think Talalovic is confident, and he thinks he's going to score every week. I think we've got a, a good player there, but it's just that confidence needs to come. Um, and then again from the back, look, it, it's to know where your weaknesses. And of course, we keep changing our back line all the time. I think only recently we've got our wing backs back into position. I've got Britain and, and Pickering, and then a somewhat stable back four. Um, so. Walstead maybe needs to catch from these balls, okay, but then against Hull, 
that he made a wonderful save and then a ball comes in and we don't clear it. You know, ifs and buts. You know, Walter doesn't catch a ball maybe against Rotherham, but the defence wasn't there against Hull. So it's it's a collective thing. They need to look at it and uh, yeah, that, that's that's my opinion. I still think he's the right man. It's just right. Where are we weak? Set pieces. Where also going for attacking set pieces and defending set pieces, and we just need to look at confidence in our strikers and maybe getting a few goals. But yeah. Just before we carry on, Haven, watch watch it with that banana. <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful. Oh, yeah. you, you're, you're on you're on show now, so you know I don't want to I don't want to get copywritten struck by some sort of filth <laughs> with that banana. Anyway, uh, Denver, you, again, you were at the games. You can, hopefully, you can see the screen. Which yeah. one of them stands out the most for being the worst? Because there are some oh, whoppers in there. Easily, easily, Huddersfield. Um, it depends what you mean by the worst. Like, I think the fact that we were winning against Watford and playing reasonably well and then throwing it away at the end, uh, well, sums Blackburn up, doesn't it? Uh, pretty well. Um, but yeah, um, but I think Huddersfield for just like this, this is the game, they're they're downtrodden. It's Boxing Day, you've got how many fans going? I, I was in the crowd, you were in the crowd, you know, it was one of them where we've gone all that way. And it was just a really mid performance. Like it was, it. I remember in the like we were singing. What do you call it? Towards the end, we were singing. Um, you know, how shit are we? You know, it's just like it. It, it was just this thing. We've won the ball. We've lost the ball. So as much as, yeah, it was just a really disappointing display. Like we just had no fight. Where the other games, you know, against Hull, we we let in sloppy goals, but. There were some moments in there where you thought, you know, we played some really good stuff against Rotherham. You know, we got those two goals and they were good goals, but then just sloppy mistakes again. Like it's just, it's just does all over. But with the interplay and stuff like that, we, we, like I remember watching a game, I think it was against Leeds, our first season. You know, those during lockdown, they posted all these games. I remember a few, I think at some point I must have been bored and watched, I think, the Leeds game. And just seeing how far we've come from that. Back style of football when we first came up, it was just who fit, you know. Richie Smallwood would just win the ball from deep, and then we'd just play it long to Danny Graham, and Danny Graham would knock it to Dak. As much, you know, a part of his miss is that the, the transition of just knocking it long to how we intricately play it in, in our triangles and move it up the pitch. It, it, it is great to watch, and seeing the work that JDT has done it is great, but it's just put it in the back of the net. And we're yeah. conceding way too many. I think we've conceded the most in the league, other than Rotherham, I think it is. That's uh, 20 in eight games, that. Exactly. So that's that's it. That's our issue. Leaking in goals and scoring them, which are the main two, isn't it? That They're the things that matter. You can play all this fancy football all you want, but you need to sort them out. You are right. You are right with the, with the, with the style of play and, and everything like that. And JDT talks about it all the time in this thing entertaining the fans it is and it is better to watch i feel that kind of football it is but you know what makes me like i tell you what every like saturday my saturdays or my weekends kind of depend on what goes on with rovers i if if we win we're going out tonight you know we're going we're eating we're having a and my morale is yo we're doing something mm -hmm. if we lose oh man i'm like i'm in the i'm in the gutter so yeah. sometimes I want one of those off your ass cheek kind of one nil wins and, and I'll take it dirty like that. I, I, yeah. I'd have that. So I think there's there's a, a balance that needs to be made. And, you know, sometimes you're going to have to switch it to a little bit of a more of a long ball kind of kind of game or a, a, mo, a mo, old school Mowbray. Mowbray did kind of bring in a little bit of bit of that. Uh, but I remember mo a lot of Mowbray early years anyway, not the league one thing when we were like low possession um, kind of quick counter attack, trying to get a get a goal that way. Jacob, what's your thoughts on that ugly eight? The ugly eight right there. What, which one was your worst? I was just going to touch on uh, just before that. You, you said DG was waiting in the wings. Thought you'd uh, sorted out Danny Graham to be on the pub. <laughs> oh, no, big Denver. I big get DG. that all the time. I get that all the time. <laughs> Black <Blackburn> fans. <laughs> But no, obviously, good to see you, Denver. Um, but for for me, I, I mean, I didn't actually. Thankfully, I, I missed out on Huddersfield tickets. <laughs> um, else that would have been a depressing way to spend my Boxing Day. But I, I did still watch it on uh, on stream. Uh, but for me, I, I'd probably say the Sheffield Wednesday result. I, I went all the way to Hillsborough, first time going there. 
and to be in such a good run of form away from home and to put in an absolutely dire performance there and um, come away from the worst team in the league at the time thinking we didn't deserve anything from that game. We we really didn't. Um, you know, we, we were lucky, uh, I thought, to, to, to even get a goal, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, we, we're talking about the style of play. I think, it, for me, it springs to mind the, the saying, champagne lifestyle on an orange juice budget. I think we're trying to have this really nice style of play, uh, you know, kind of the, the Southampton kind of style of play, I suppose, keeping the ball and knocking it about. But we, we just simply don't have the players for it. Um, you look at our two goals away at Hull, they're both counter-attacks. You know, Sigurdsson over the top for Smodix and uh, Sigurdsson again putting it through for Pickering. It's the both counter-attacking goals. We knock it about and it's nice and pretty, but we we don't have the players to execute that style of football, in my opinion. And it just leads to us losing the ball um, after we've knocked it about on the opposition's box for 20 passes or whatever, not finding that killer pass. Uh, we, we lose the ball, we get caught out on the counter. And I think that's why our defence is as bad as it is and the goals conceded this season are as high as they are. Um, I just think we, we we simply do not have the players to play this uh, to play this style of football. We don't have the experience. We've lost, you know, our two most experienced players in the summer, Ayala and Dak, and we've replaced them with no experience at all. To to say Ryan Hedge is someone who has barely played. You know, he's probably played about 30, 40 championship games, and he's our most experienced player. It's just a, it's just an absolute joke, to be honest. Uh, so personally, I think JDT isn't going to change his style of football. You know, I, I think it, that's clear to see. He's going to stick with it through thick and thin. I, I'm, I cannot see a game where JDT changes us to a back five and starts playing long ball up to Talalovic. Cannot see it. Um, I think he'll live and die by the sword with it. But um, I think in the summer, if if this is the way we want to go next season, he, he needs to be backed with some experienced players who can actually play this style of football. So, from what I'm hearing, is is you you believe that JDT will stick to his guns with this style of football, and the, and you know, of course, when we look at the last eight uh, results, have been terrible, you know, and if if the board don't. You know, provide him any any new assets or new new recruits or or what have or, or even even kind of you know because Telelovic was a panic buy it looks it looks to be from from an outside looking in it doesn't seem like it's a strategic buy I think it you know I think it was like okay well we need a striker you've been moaning about striker we'll give you this penny penny signing or whatever uh, there might be more of those which probably won't won't really strengthen us whatsoever but. By your words, he'll stick to this play. Is that the right thing for Rovers moving forward? If we are not going to get that investment, if we're going to, this is what you get, or you're going to get peanut signings, like maybe that guy from Crew. No disrespect to the guy from Crew. It could be, it could be all right, but there's not going to be no, there's not going to be no, you know, marquee signings or what have you. And if and if we do sell, we probably won't really invest. So so his hands are tied. And, and from your words, we not really cannot really play his style or the way he wants to play with what we've got. Is he the right man for what we've got? As much as I don't want to compare it to them lot down the road, I think it is very much a, a case of what company's doing at Burnley. He's refusing to change his style of play and it's costing them this season. And, you know, that eight-game run we've been on under JDT... He should have changed the tactics four games ago, in my opinion. I think you've you've got to be versatile as a manager. And when it's not working and when we've got the amount of players we've got out right now, you know, Hyam's been rushed back. It looks like he's look he's looked really sloppy and that's so unlike him. He's usually a such a consistent performer for us and he, he looks really poor. Um, you know, obviously Hedges, Dolan and whatnot. Joe Rankin Costello's been such a big mess. Um yeah, he needs to not be as stubborn. And I think, yeah, I think ultimately, if we, if he's not going to get backed in the summer, I, I probably wouldn't mind that much if we were to let go of him, I'll be honest, because uh, 
I just think with this style of football, like I said, champagne kind of lifestyle and an orange juice budget, it's not, it's just not working. I would much rather see us play low possession, be some of our parts, and kind of just try and shit out our way to the playoffs. To be honest with you, because we, we, I just do not think we have the quality. But personally, as much as some people may enjoy this style of football, I, I, I just personally do not. I, I, I find it really infuriating us just knocking the ball about. Pass, 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 and just nothing comes of it, and we just get hit on the counter. And um, especially being sat at Blackburn End, yeah, when you're at the at goal, <laughs> yeah, precisely. So just to to see it being not passed about, passed about, passed about, and we just do not have that player who's kind of just got that killer pass, and then someone who actually shoots, that'd be nice. Um, so yeah, personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't kind of mind seeing him go if. If we're not going to really get that back, and maybe get a John Eustace in or something like that. Okay, well that's 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 something. Uh, yeah. The voice of Jacob right there saying that he doesn't mind if if G, G, G goes. Alex, what's, where's your position? If you are you, are you in, are you out? You don't really care. You're happy with what is, or you'll go whatever. Um, I yeah, I, I get the frustration that people are feeling. I'm feeling that as well, big time. Um, with the, you know, the we, the players are getting in really good positions and they're having shots, but they're not scoring. So I see, you know, I see what he's trying to do. I just I'm hoping that something drops for the like a, like a lucky penny or something. I'm hoping just it all falls into place and you know and and we start scoring more goals and defending better. But uh, it's like, how long do you give him? I mean. I'm still at the point where I want to give him more time. I want to see if he can turn things around this season and produce a good second half to the season. I'm willing to let our bad form of 2023 go and be positive. And at this point in time, I'm willing to stick stick with JDT's program. But I think if th- you know if it's not a good 2024. Then I think, then we have to make a serious decision. But I, I would give him the second half of the season, and hope that he's backed properly in January. I think if he's not backed properly in January to get the players that he particularly wants to to make things work, then then he'll probably go anyway. But or you know, or results would dictate that he goes. So I think. Give him the second half of the season. That's where I'm at at the moment. All right. Well, I'll uh, sidestep from you to Millie. If I was to keep put you in a corner and say, will JDT be here this time next season? What would you say? Uh, I'd probably say no, just because of the fact that he's, he's starting to wind up the fans a bit now because you can see with, with all, um, I found this hilarious, some guy... When um so uh, when Rovers put out the graphic saying oh match day whatever it is and then blah blah blah, some guy put make sure you tell the players to turn up with a kiss. So I just I just laughed at it because obviously it's it's true really. Um, I can't remember. I think I was saying it to Alex when we went at the pub. It was either Alex or Denver. Um, basically, I said that um they're all they're all Brady folks, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Can't remember who I said it to though. Um, but they are, they, they are really, there's no, well, obviously I can't really comment on the home games because I've not really seen any, I've been working there, but on the away games that I've been watching, they, they all, oh, I'll, I'll have the ball, I'll have the ball, and they don't pass it, they don't play it as they should, they don't play it as though it's a team game, they play it as though it's, oh, it's a me game type thing. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, that's, that's, one of the reasons why they ended up conceding only twenty goals in eight games. Yeah, well, that, that it is a scary stat, and uh, and uh, the the flair thing does my nut in a bit too much. Too many back heels for me uh, personally at the minute. Uh, some of them, when ex- of course, when they go through and they, and it all works out, I, I love it. Mm-hmm. But uh, more often than not, I'm seeing them just go to crap. Go, they, they're not switched on. They try like like it is kind of what Jacob's saying, champagne football with. With with uh, crappy little players, but uh, 
But uh, Denver, put, putting you under the spotlight. It looks like you are under the spotlight right now. Yeah. Um, you know, do you have like I've got a bit of a bit of bit of FOMO, fear of missing out. I think I think there's something somebody better out there. You know, I like JDT, and I think you know, I, I like right the start of the season. His stock was high. We were mm. scared. Fire Nord, PSV were looking at him. Oh, we're going to lose JDT now. Mm, you know, mm. do we have the right man? Uh, in the dugout, I uh, I I think so. I think look again. I hate saying it, but from from a coaching perspective, I think look clearly the board that Blackman Rovers, you know, the CEOs above, want to play this style of football. Because um, remember, he was head hunted. He he was given the the job opportunity. This is the kind of way we want to play. So even if we do let JDT go, it won't be for a change of tactics. It will be because the philosophy of the club is to play this way. Uh, and this is how we're going to go up. So if you're going to bring someone in, it's going to be someone who has a similar philosophy, who wants to build a team. And then trying to bring in some, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it in January. So um, I don't see, I don't see him going. And um, look, I, I think, just going off what everyone else has said, look, it's hard, from from what I've seen, what JDTs were doing on working on uh, on the training pitch and everything is working. It's right. We're going to play it out from the back. We're going to transition through the thirds. That is undoubtedly what we are trying to do. What's our issue, of course, is it's just it's just finding that final either overplaying it to the point where look at some point you just need to have a shot. You just need to need to score or trying to find a striker who's confident in front of goal and that will score goals. So that, if you always sat next to me on the, against, against Rotherham, I was, I was, I just wanted it to come off Telovich's arse or something just to get a goal, just to get him going and get that confidence going. Cause I think people are annoyed now because we're conceding too many and scoring, not scoring enough. But of course the style of football that we're playing, of course we're playing high and we're trying to just suffocate the, the team. If we start scoring goals, I guarantee we score three, four, and then and then it'll be all right. But the issue, of course, is we're not scoring these goals and we're having all this possession. When we lose out, we're getting done on the counter and, and we're conceding sloppy goals. So uh, if we start scoring goals, I think people love the football. You know, it'll be like, oh, look, we're playing really, playing out from the back, we're beating the press, we're playing through. And, and if, if it works, it works. But like like Jacob said, what he would have changed the tactics four days. I think I would have... Stop playing so much of the intricate stuff and just look. We're conceding too many goals. If if it's a dodgy ball, just play, it, kick it out, and just keep it simple. Just keep that. Just we need to stop conceding goals. That's our main issue at the minute. But I think JDT will still play the same football, um, which is not a bad thing. But again, we just I think sometimes we just need to play it safe, especially at the minute now. How many goals we've conceded in the past month? So yeah, and. So, bring it back to put to, to the the point here, and and lovely segue coming up here to what we're going to talk about next is, you know, the manager himself, JDT, must you know look at himself. Uh, like Malmo did great, two titles, we get him. We got, you know, our expectations are, are positive. It has a great season, goal difference, missing out on the playoff stock is high. Now it's taking a tumble. You know, look at look at someone mentioned the guy Wayne Rooney. You know, he did all right. For a shit scenario at Derby, did a shit scenario at Derby, but did I know they got relegated, but points deduction, whatever. He kind of, even though uh, Rossini was the with the brains behind all that, his he he kind of his stock remained. He's made means solid, and he went to MLS and whatever, and did, did business over there. Came to Birmingham with with high expectations. Now after this shambles at Birmingham, no one's going to be rushing out with a to to grab Wayne Rooney. JDT has got to think about his own stock. If he's if he wants to see himself as a higher caliber manager, he's gonna have to either, you know, pick 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 things up a little bit here, or he may have to walk to save his own kind of future uh, higher ability. If he because I'm sure he's got aspirations to top level in the Holland and top level in, in maybe in the Premier League or maybe back to Italy where he was a, a quality player. So he'll also have to judge his own scenario. He might you know, and nobody wants a sacking on their resume. So not people are saying, you know, we, we're saying we're phrasing this. Is it time to go for us as fans pushing him out the door? But is it also time for JDT to think, hang on a minute. 
can I save this? Is this is this a, a poison chalice? Is it like a Sunderland? You know, like whatever. Anyway, but stock being high, that's my segue. Look at this guy, JD. I mean, uh, Jacob talked about him today with uh, the guys over at Sheffield United Way. Uh, uh, making a potential return to English football, it looks like, with Sheffield United. Let's go straight to you, Jacob, about uh, that possible return. And, you know, there might be a scenario that might see us meet in the FA Cup somewhere along the ways. But uh, what are, what is everyone's thoughts of about uh, Diaz returning to England so soon? Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one, really, isn't it? I mean, obviously, it's, uh, I said on uh, the Sheffield United way, they've probably got him at the wrong time. Uh, it's always always seems to be in the new year after Christmas, his form dropped off for us, didn't it? You think back to the season he got 20 goals before the new year and obviously last season as well, shambolic form after the new year. Um, but yeah, just uh, it's probably been too big of a step, you would think, going to Villarreal. Um, obviously, you know, I, I mentioned that on the Sheffield United way, uh, you know, he, he did have a kid um, last season whilst he was with us. And then to obviously have that change in your life, to move to a different country, to Spanish speakers, despite being with the Chilean squad. So I imagine that's been hard work as well in, in of itself and to completely change the level you're playing at, the style of play. I think it's probably been a, just a bit too much for him uh, all at once. And um, I think to come back to England, um, even albeit the Prem, uh, could do him some good. I think he's very much a confidence player. I think we could all see that from his time at Rovers. Absolutely torrid first two years where his confidence was shot. All the fans were on his back. No one wanted anything to do with him. Two goals in two seasons. That COVID season didn't have the fans there. And I think he... Started to kind of find his feet a little bit, grow into his body, and then obviously gets the gets the chilly call up and just goes from there. Um, I think if he gets a goal in his first couple games for Sheffield United, I think he's one of those players who could go on to maybe get five to ten goals to him from now till the end of the season. But if he goes a few games without a goal, I could quite easily see him being a massive flop, unfortunately. Yeah. Um... If we, but if we turn the clock back, of course, of course, uh, our attacking line was much stronger with him uh, last season compared to where we are now. And um, do you see any similarities in any of the, the the reinforcements we have this year? This is to open to everybody. Of course, we brought in Arna, now a permanent signing, which is great. I think that's a good bit of business. Um, and uh, he's chipped in with a few goal, handful of goals already, which is which is what we want. Um, um, you know, I think, I think, I think that's probably the closest I can see from what we've got from the new new additions, the the, the, the closest replacement. Uh, but Alex, what's your take on on uh, on how we've we've responded replacing his goals? Um, well, it's been a letdown. Uh, we got a lot of young attacking players, and they're not delivering the goals for various reasons. You know, the more experienced players are getting some goals, like Smodix and Sigurdsson. But we haven't, you know, I mean, if Smodix hadn't miraculously, you know, turned up like he has so far this season, um, then where we, we haven't got any goals, you know, <laughs> problem the odd one from Sigurdsson. Uh, so, yeah, it's, we haven't replaced, we haven't re really replaced him. It's only because of Smodix that we're not feeling it. We, we would, otherwise we would be. Um, we'd be feeling it more. Um, so, yeah, I'm not surprised that it hasn't worked out for him at Villarreal. And yes, it could go either way for him at, Sheffield United, like, like, like it's been said, um, but uh, yeah, we we haven't got an experienced player up front. We haven't got, you know, as much as people don't rate Gallagher for, because he doesn't bring goals, he does, he does 
brings something to the to the forward line, and and he he does actually defend. Um, <laughs> Well, so, yeah, I, I'll I'll jump in on that. I think I think you know Gallagher's going to come out of this smelling of roses. I think I think you know last year, what the years gone by, Gallagher has just mugged us off for a living. To be honest with you, like goals wise, whatever. But right here, right now, when you compare him to the Niall Ennis, to the to the to uh, Matey Boy Telelovic, or what have you, even you know like young Harry Leonard. Don't want to get on his his case too too soon, but but, but just would, imagine. He, Sorry, can I just say, just imagine if Gallagher could hold the ball up. <laughs> yeah. Not not literally yeah. with his hands, we but you know imagine. what I mean. <laughs> or if he could get on the end of some headers, that would be um, yeah. more, more headers, yeah, yeah. more headers. I know he's had a couple of uh, a couple of them, but 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 I tell you, he's when he does come back and hopefully comes back, you know, he, even with just a handful of goals, he will he will probably mug us off to get a new contract or what have <laughs> you. And uh, and we'll be stuck with him again because uh, <laughs> um, I don't want that. I'm going to be honest with you. I'd rather we cut our losses and and even if it's let him go for free, get that wage put to somewhere else. Mm. Um, and and again, yeah, I know he does offer something, but you know, surely, surely we can we can put the money uh, to good use. But but Diaz uh, here in his Villarreal shirt has been a major turd for them so far. No goals even in the <laughs> cup. Um, uh, Denver, uh, you know, uh, what, what's your stance on our, on our current far forward line right now with the return of Gallagher? Do we have any hope that he can step up Gallagher and take over and maybe contribute? Some no, goals? no, I can't. I think it's better than what we've just a simple answer. No, but, but I think, but go on. Oh, I was just going to say, but at least he's got championship experience, which we're crying yeah. out for. <laughs> yeah, and I think. And I think what he does offer is he will, you know, he's a big guy up top and he does cause a concern. And he can score, you know, if you do, you give Scaliger too much space, he can score a goal. Uh, so what, what he does um, automatically, as soon as he's on that pitch, you've got these defenders and they'll, 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 they'll draw him and they'll, he'll draw these defenders in, creating space for our wide players. And that's when our, like the Brent, Ben Bridge and Diaz would have his joys out wide. And, you know, you Ryan Hedges and stuff like that. So now that we don't have that threat at the minute up top, you can see our, our wide players aren't really getting as much joy. Um, and up to be fair, we're kind of playing a weird formation with, you know, Talalovic and Smodic is almost playing as that second striker. But um, but yeah, uh, I think, I think, I th like I said, Talalovic, I think if you just get Evie, Conf you say how much Ben Brewton Diaz is comes to play. If you get Talalovic going, I think that you know, there could be something there. I really do. Um, it's just frustrating when I'm, when I'm seeing like just, just get a goal, just get a goal, and you never know. That's, yeah, I, I think you, I think you're right as well. I was hoping, I was hoping he would do it against uh, Hull or Rotherham or get his mm. first goal because this next few games, and again another segue coming up here. In the next few games, we're going to look at them here and we're going to go around the room and see how many points we get. There are some very winnable games uh, for Rovers to to get back on track. Uh, but I'm going to pose this question to Millie and then to the rest. It's a, it's a kind of a, a weird one, but we are threadbare right now and we are looking at some senior players coming back. I'm going to reel them off. Scotty Wharton, Dom Hyams back, but he's not back. Uh, JRC, Gallagher, Hedges, oh, Tyree Stolen. Who have we been missing the senior most? Players. Senior who, players. Who out of that are you looking forward to returning the most out of those injured crop? Millie. Uh, I'd say uh, it's either having the uh, Wharton duo or um, I'd say, well, yeah, I'd just say the, the Wharton duo, really. So, so you're keen on uh, on bringing Scotty Wharton back. Let's wide swipe back to, uh, well, I don't know what Alex is doing over there. Let's go, Jacob. Uh, so, Jacob, who, do, who have you been uh, missing the most and... Who do you think would slot back in and uh, give us a bit of a bit of good vibes back at Ewood? I think uh, personally, I think once Dom Hyam is hundred percent back up to full fitness, I think he's uh, invaluable in this squad. Um, obviously, our player of the season last year, and for good reason. Um, you know, I think practically played every single game last year. Didn't get injured, and. Um, Offered a, a seven, eight minimum every game out of ten. Um, 
you could tell he's been rushed back. Um, you know, obviously, I think Scott Wharton getting injured didn't help. But even then, we could have played James Hill. He was on the bench against Hull. Um, just really rushed him back. You could tell how how sloppy that goal was that the lap scored and absolutely done him over. And that is just not Dom Hyam. He just does not allow that to happen at full fitness. And then, obviously, to bring the player down as well and get sent off, that, that just is not him. Um, so with the amount of goals we're leaking right now, I'd love for Hyam. Obviously, you know he's 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 not going to play against Cambridge. You would think he's going to give him a two week period to to you know hopefully again maybe get back to full fitness. And he he needs game time obviously to get back up to hundred percent. But you know I'd rather not rush him back. But I mean we may have to if uh, Carter. He's on his way out, and it looks like there's a potentiality Hill could be recalled back to Bournemouth as well, unfortunately. So, we may find ourselves having to work him back again. Alex, what are you thought? So, are you, are you with uh, Jacob on this one with uh, Dom Hyam, or have you got uh, a soft spot for uh, somebody else? Uh, Hyam, when he's on his game, it, you know, that's what we need in that defence. Um, so... Yeah, we, we, we need him back. We need him back to his absolute best. And then I think defensively we'll be stronger. Um, touch wood. Um, so, yeah, I think he's a difference maker. He really is. He's the closest thing we've got to an experienced defender. Um, and he's mobile. Uh, so, you know. It's uh, it, it's what we need. We need him at him at his best, commanding that back line, and hopefully giving the goalkeeper a bit more confidence. Um, yeah, and, and the goalkeeper needs to do a bit more extra training, I reckon. So, it, let's put this one just to you, you, you and me only here on this one. If both fit pairs and Walsh. That who's your keeper right now? Whoa. Uh, Put you under the gun here, man. Uh, <laughs> I think I might have to go pairs right now. Right now. Because I've seen a lot that's that I have, don't want to see <laughs> from Wolfstad. Yeah. Well again, you know, I I I I think with with what's in front of him is is also Probably one yeah. of them. Yes, has yeah. some clangers. Yes, has some clangers. But again, what's in front of him has been pretty poor. I but I might be tempted to take him out for a bit, um, give pairs a go. I don't think it's going to. You know, we're going from a rock to a hard place kind of thing. We, you know, we. I don't see us. I don't see it being. Uh, it's not going to get. How can it get much worse? You know, <laughs> that's what that'd be my argument. So you might as well. See how pairs can can do. Give him a shot to try and stop, and then and then go from there. And then, yeah, I think in the long run, Wolstad could be better. I think should be. I think I think so. I think he should be should in the long be. run, but he needs a bit of time. He needs more time training, I think, and learning. He needs some glue on those gloves. Yeah, and some glue on the gloves. Yeah. My, what are you saying there, Jacob? Goes, uh, my mind just goes back to uh, pairs away at Plymouth, if you remember that. The absolute <sighs> clanger he had versus them where he comes out and, uh, well, I don't know, I can't even remember what he does, punches it or heads it or something like that and then gets chipped. And there was a, there's a couple other mistakes before he got injured as well. Just as bad as the ones Leo is having right now, in my opinion, and not ones for someone of his experience he should be making. I think, obviously, people have short memories. Um, I think, you know, he, Leo probably does need some time out of the team. I I, I agree. I think, you know, he, he, he's having it that rough right now when reporters are asking JDT questions about about him in particular and singling him out for, for someone of his age that can't be doing him any good. So he probably does need to come out to the team just for that reason. But yeah, I think Pears had a really good second half of last season. Uh, I think we were all thinking we need to sell Kaminsky. We can't really keep Pears and Kaminsky. Pears can use his feet. He's he's had a good second half to the season. And then, 
he started he did start this season really poorly in my opinion, pairs. So I think a lot of people were calling for Leo to get a chance before he got injured and some people were quite happy uh, that pairs got injured. So we could see Leo. Um but yeah, people have short memories. So I guess we'll I guess we'll see what we get. And then Denver, just to wrap up on, on the goalkeeper scenario, what about who starts against Cambridge? Walsh that remains, or does it go to even the the third string keeper, young Joe now, Hilton? Does he... I think just because of how, you know, how poor Walsh did, I think at the minute now just needs game time. And I, I think he, he starts against Cambridge um, as much as, you know, because if, if Ainsley, sorry, if Ainsley Pears and Walsh are both fit, this is a game for for Walstead, isn't it? So like for his age, you want him to you want him to like right, go go out there, you know, in training now, this is where you know where his weaknesses are, working his weaknesses. Of course, as a collective, as a group, they'll do their work. But um yeah, Walstead, I would say Walstead to start that game. And of course, for how many games after that, Huddersfield, West Brom. Um even it when Pears comes back, I know people have said you'd probably swap him, but for a confidence thing, as soon as some I know he's the number one A's with Pears, but I don't know. I don't know. It's a tough one. Like again, he's made he has made some really good saves. I know Pears has made some really good saves as well, but um yeah, it's only a minor tweak. It's only one of those things. When these balls are coming in, that, that's their job now as the coaching staff is to to see if we can get that out of him. Okay, on the screen now is of course a quick look at what's ahead for Rovers. Uh, let's 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 ignore the Cambridge one. Like I said, we you know I'm, we're hoping for a win. Uh, should get a win, um, but uh, never look, look a gift horse in the mouth. But if we start from the bottom on the graphic on our screen, Millie, there's five games on the screen there. How many points do you think Rovers, under the current climate, are going to get from those five games? Well, um, so obviously in the last eight, we've conceded 20 goals, right? Um one of the teams that we've conceded then goals against is up against us again, but at home. So, against West Brom, that that'll be tough. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say we'd win. I'd say at least a draw. So that's one. Uh, Rovers versus Huddersfield. I'd, again, I'd say about. Uh, I, I think they're going to win one nil with how they played us last compared to how we played so that's a no-go for us Cardiff versus Rovers I think we'll draw that um, about 2-2 two, two, I reckon I'll be a, a bit optimistic um, so that's another point Rovers versus QPR we should we should win that um, so that's 3 so 3-4 at 5 and then Rovers versus Stoke Um I'd I'd say I'd say a win, but then again, never bet on Rovers. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight. that's what eight points, yeah. 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 Uh, Jacob, higher or lower? <laughs> um, I think I'd go lower to be honest, considering mm. the way we're playing right now. Uh, I don't give us a chance at West Brom. Uh, I think Colburn's doing really well there and away from home, yeah. I think we got lucky to get that win at the start of the season, in, in truth. Um, <clears throat> Huddersfield, they're such a bogey team for us, but that's usually more like the John Smiths than it is at home. Um, there's a potentiality. We kind of right some wrongs there. And looking at those games, if we are going to turn the form around, it has to be you know, Huddersfield or QPR at home where we, we just get that win and get the fans back on side. So, I'll, I'll, I'll probably go with a draw of Huddersfield just because I do think they are a bogey team for us. Cardiff, I, I kind of agree with Miller. I could maybe see us getting something there. don't think they're the best. Uh, but, yeah, our way form is, well, just our form in general has obviously been so bad. So, I'll go with a point. QPR, I think we, it has to be a win, um, personally. We, we cannot afford to lose that at home. They were, they were so dire when we went to Loftus Road early in the season and embarrassing, and they're still down there. Uh, we need to start beating some of these teams who are down there, which always seems to be our downfall. We, we always 
make these shit teams look good and <laughs> give them points for, for whatever reason. Uh, Rotherham obviously being an example and Huddersfield, Sheffield Wednesday. But I think QPR, we, ju- we just always seem to do well against them. So I'll give ourselves three points against them. And then I think Stoke at home, um, for some reason, I can just see them, see them beating us at home. I think they'll right the wrongs of when we went over to their place and tonked them, what was it, 3-0, 3-1. Something like that. So, yeah, I'll go with five points from uh, those five games. Denver, you? I would say, well, if we don't, you know, because of course it's subject to the transfer window, some of these games, you know, we bring in someone mm-hmm. who can score or if someone just starts fighting the back of the net, one of these strikers, or we shore ourselves up. You never know. You know, it's a lot of games, a lot can change. But if we're purely, if I'm purely going off what I've seen, I can't see our strikers scoring any goals and I can still see enough. JDT is going to adamant to play exactly how we've been playing. We're going to leak goals. So I can see West Brom is going to be a loss. I'll just rattle through. Huddersfield, possibly a draw, be one of those where we might, we might, might score early and then, and then they might score in the last 10 minutes. It always seems to be. And then um, Cardiff, I can see, like, you know, everyone's, it's one of those, like, Huddersfield, we, oh, we've got to go, and we're going to get a win here, and we lose. Sheffield Wednesday, I can see Cardiff just that that day being that, you know, just before my birthday as well, that game. So I'm hoping for a win, but, you know. And then QPR, I can see a win there, maybe, if we, if we, uh, we you know, because they're in a, a pretty poor. And then a, another Stoke loss, I, I can just see Stoke. I mean, any, any, I think last season they came and, and ruined the party as much as we beat them at their place. But um, so I'm saying four points, I think, out of that. Four Ooh. points. Yeah. But I'm hoping, look, look, I'm hoping so we can turn it round. JDT's football. We start finding the back of the net, you know. Here's hoping. Alex, wrap us up. Okay. I'm putting on my invisible Rovers rose tinted glasses. Uh, <laughs> yes. yes, Alex. And, it's one of his cards. Yeah, and um, uh, I know, I'm going for a win against Cambridge. <laughs> um, uh, I, I wouldn't know at the minute. <laughs> ev- everything is everything's going to miraculously fall into place, and they're going to start scoring goals four, I reckon. Um, but Cambridge will still get one because our defence can't keep a clean sheet. Um, West Brom versus Blackburn. I've gone for two two. Oh, that's one point. Your game, if that's the case. Yeah, yeah, and and Blackburn versus Huddersfield. I've I've gone for they they exact some level of revenge, um, and get the three goals, but also let in a, a goal because that's the Rovers' way. We're not going to completely wipe it off the slate. We, you know, they'll they'll leave a mark on us. So uh, so three points there. Then Cardiff Blackburn, I've gone for a draw. Um, I think that's a little bit ambitious, but um, gone for a one-one draw uh, for some reason. Um, against QPR, yes, surely we have to win that because, as you said, um, as Jacob said, QPR was so dire that I've gone for a two-nil victory to Blackburn and Stoke. I think Stoke will be a hard-fought game. Hard-fought game, but I've gone for an ambitious 1-0 against Stoke. Um, by that time, our defence has just... They, they've really sorted it out. They've... <laughs> like, I don't know what they've... They've, they've had a meet with Martin Keown. I don't know. Um, um, something's happened. And then... Nice to go on about Arsenal, does Alex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of mates who are Arsenal fans. Um, I'm, well. Sorry, I'm going to try to stop talking about Arsenal. Um, but yeah, so how many points is that? A bunch, a lot. It's a bunch. <laughs> it's quite a lot. I think. I think you maybe I don't know. Was it three six? Uh, what you An say? Unrealistic amount. It's a draw. It's not realistic, three. is it? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not realistic. Two two clean sheets in a row was unrealistic enough. I think you said nine. <laughs> I think you might have got nine. Okay, it's not bad. I'll take eight. I'd say yeah. eight yeah. out of five. Well, that's uh, the, the current yeah. state of the, the Rovers climate right now with JDT. I think you know, we're all down in the dumps. I think we just need a good result or two just to kind of get us back 
on the right track and a solid transfer window again as there's, there's talk out there of players coming in coming out but nothing nothing concrete even that big room about the crew player it seemed to dying down as the days go by but uh uh yeah appreciate everybody coming here on a, on a school night it's late thanks thanks for your, your words of wisdom and we'll make a point of it to come back again sooner rather than later um but uh, appreciate everybody in any closing comments around the room yeah, we need to do it more often. Yeah, we need to do it more often. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's been about a year. Sure. <laughs> hey, hey I, I've moved. My dog's sick. Wife got a new job. Look, lots going on. Lots going on. No, I know. I, no. I apologize, but we will. We will make it a bit more often. And uh, but I appreciate everybody coming in tonight, especially Denver uh, coming in straight from work. Appreciate it, man, and everybody else for staying up late past your bedtime, Alex. I'm sure you can get back to that banana. <laughs> <laughs> banana. <laughs> Bananas history. The banana Bana history. Yeah, you, you, that's what she said. All right. Uh, man, <laughs> there on that one. Until then, I'll see you all very, very soon. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good comments. Uh, like Sorry I couldn't get to the comments, but uh, we'll be back another time. Anyway, until we I'll catch up with all years later, I'll speak to you all. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Uh, JDT, uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.